Flamingo Vase Polymer Clay Sculpture by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi guys! So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you this Flamingo Vase or Pink Chicken Vase, depending on if you're me or the rest of the world. Uh, my family, we always call them Pink Chickens, don't we, Melody? Yeah, we call them Pink Chickens. But, so, okay. So this is my mother's birthday present. And I wanted to do a funky flamingo vase and I just had this idea in my head for whatever reason and I love the way it turned out. It's all very pink and bright and neon and goofy and fun. I hope you guys like it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So to start with, I'm going to make a copper little skeleton out of some copper wire going around my vase. So I have a loop that goes around the vase and then I twisted the ends of that copper together and created the neck going up. So like I said, it's a little skeleton, it's a little um, armature underneath there. This is going to really and really improve the strength of your clay. So after I have that done, I'm going to take that off and then with some foil, I'm going to be building up his neck. So I'm just going to take and just kind of wrap little chunks of foil around and around just like that. Once I'm happy with this size of it make sure that it is smaller than you want the neck of your flamingo to be because the clay will bulk it up quite a bit but wrap that nice and tightly as tightly and smoothly as you can with some masking tape then I have a sheet of polymer clay rolled out a really nice bright pink and I'm going to wrap that around my around the neck of my flamingo and then I'm going to take and just kind of smooth it out so that a lot of those little seams and fingerprints hopefully aren't going to be distracting too much. They do not have to all go away, however, because I'm going to be adding quite a bit of texture to my flamingo. Then I'm going to roll a nice little ball of clay and add that for his head, going up just like that. Same thing, kind of blend it together so it doesn't look like it's uh, separate. You don't want it to look like all these pieces are just stuck together. You want it to be nice and blended. Carve out for the eyes, create a little eye socket there. Don't actually like gouge it, it just sort of gently push the clay so that there's a little bit of a raised area around it. And then also create little pushes in on the sides for where the cheeks are going to be. And just kind of keep adjusting that area before you go any further and try to get it as smooth as you can and just try to get it as nice looking and as uh, even from side to side, I guess, is the biggest the biggest challenge there. So roll some white clay and sort of wrap that around the end of the wire for the beak and gently press that up into where you pushed, pushed in for a smile. So you kind of have to work it in there and then smooth it out later. It's kind of more of the technique. And I'm going to be using a set of... Uh, it's a pick set that I have. It's more like an industrial pick set, but they're wonderful clay tools, better than marketed clay tools. I think this one, this funny little uh, pick and hook set is what it's called. And I'm just going to take and use that to sort of blend out my clay and also create the little indent for the beak for where the smile is. Take little balls of that little white clay and fill that in for the eyes, sort of press them into that eye area that you created. And then taking that same little sharp little pick I'm going to take and make my little feather texture same thing as for texture just push it in and kind of just gently pull it back very similar to if you're drawing for texture I I one of my I don't know a long time ago I've drawn all sorts of animals in graphite I used to love graphite I haven't used it in a long time but it's very similar to just drawing those little feathers or those little fur lines in graphite or charcoal or whatever medium it is that you're using but yeah so just go over and cover the entire neck with those little tiny flicks of the wrist is what you're doing and when you get to the point where the back of the neck is all done put it back onto the vase and then you don't have to worry about the back anymore and just add the little texture to the rest of it and you also have to really worry about holding it anymore because the vase is holding it and you can hold the vase so all the way around as well as on the face and then I'm going to take and add another sheet of clay over that wire for one side of the body and then take my knife and I'm going to be cutting it out and just sort of blending out the edges and then smoothing it down and cutting it again and blending and smoothing cutting so on and then after I have that done I'm just going to kind of look down my flamingo from the front to kind of make sure that it is half of the vase because it might be hard to tell maybe you went a little over half and it's going to look uneven then blend it into the neck so I had more clay to that area to blend that together so it didn't look you can't you don't want to see the wire or any weird lumps from the wire then take and with longer strokes add some feather textures to the back and then roll out some snakes some nice long snakes and then flatten them so I'm doing I did all my rolling for this by hand instead of using my pasta maker because my pasta maker leaves little gray stripes on my clay which when I'm doing something that's all white and I'm going to be painting it does not matter in the slightest but since this was pink I needed to do all my hand rolling so roll out your snakes by hand and then just flatten them out with a little I have a little wooden um, little wooden rolling pin 
and then create the little texture on the feather. So create the main, the quill down the center, and then add all of the little feather lines on the sides. So do that for three feathers, three, three feathers, three long wing feathers on each side. And after you have the one side of your flamingo done, go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. I didn't necessarily videotape doing both sides because if you guys saw one, you pretty much got it. So then make three more of those same feathers and then lay those over the back for the tail feathers. Cook your flamingo. After he is baked, so do this according to package instructions, I'm going to be making his legs. So I have two more pieces of that copper wire and I'm going to be bending them into the shape that I want for the legs. One of them is going to be bent up so that he's standing on one leg and then you're going to wrap those in a lighter shade of pink clay. So just add all of that over the top. One thing that I did um, here after I made this face and my dad was looking, I was like, oh smart, use copper. When you put water in there, the copper is going to act as a um, antimicrobial agent and prevent you know stuff from going in there I'm like I had no idea but anyways it's a good benefit to using copper it will uh, turn green but that doesn't really doesn't really matter you can't even really see it unless you look from the top going down anyway I added a little bit more bulk around the knee to give him a knobby knee and then you're also going to need to point the toe and then add two more toes to either side so my flamingo he's a three-toed flamingo if you look at flamingos they pretty much have three main toes and they are webbed if you want to go to that detail I didn't bother with that but they have the three main toes and then they have kind of like a little nub sticking out the back I didn't bother with the nub I just added those three longer toes add a couple little wrinkles on the leg with your pick tool or whatever clay tool it is that you want to use and then repeat the steps and make the other leg so I've got that one all covered in clay smoothing it out then I'm going to be adding a bulk right around the middle for where the knee is and then I'm going to take just a touch more of that lighter pink clay and I'm going to make the long toes just kind of smoothing everything like I said those tools are fantastic if you have an opportunity to use or to get those they're not very expensive I know when I got them I was like huh, I wonder if these will work and they were on a super sale at a hardware store and I was like these look like they work really well for clay I'll try them out they weren't that expensive they were a couple bucks I'm like hey cool and they're amazing and they're yeah so perfect after you have all of those done go ahead and cook those and then I'm going to take some multi-surface water um, water-based paint but it's paint that can get wet after it's been dried for long enough and I painted the couple little details on the legs and then I'm going to take and paint my details on my flamingo's face I did not add any other paint to the rest of my vase I just left it that wonderful bright pink I could have if you wanted to you could say wash over it with a lighter or a darker you could wash over it with a darker shade of pink and then bring out some of those shadows or you could dry brush it with a lighter shade of pink and it would bring out some of the higher points I liked just leaving the pink plain. I love that color and I just thought, you know what? It's it's good. I like it. So I didn't bother painting anything else. But on my flamingo for his beak, it's a subtle white to light pink gradient going down and then a black tip. And then you're going to want to take that black and continue it up into just to define that smile. I'm going to bring that down just like that. And the eyes, I did nice bright green. The reason I chose green instead of any other color that you can paint your flamingo's eyes is because green and red are on the opposite sides of the color wheel. And red and pink red is a, or pink is a shade of red so opposite colors are going to make each other look nice and bright so they went i went that route however it, it really doesn't matter any colors that go together um that look good together are perfect i would go with a bright color though just to kind of stick with the bright neon goofy sense of this fun little flamingo so i hope you guys like this my mom loved it she put bamboo in it which i think is the perfect the perfect thing he looks so cute with his bamboo shoot sticking out the top of the vase so like i said i hope you guys like this as much as i do and please check out my facebook and instagram accounts to see more of my art and i will see you in my next video bye